definitely Edgar. Canelo only picked him because Canelo is only taking easy fights. So um, Edgar shouldn't be honored that Canelo picked him. Uh, yeah. Edgar should be insulted because Canelo see him as easy work, bro. I know that sounds good right now. I know you're feeling yourself and it's Friday, but mark my words tomorrow. You're going to eat these words and I'm screaming recording it. because I'm, I'm not going to eat these words, bro, because at the end of the day, bro, at the end of the day, bro, the same thing, what happened with Sonny Liston and Floyd Pat Patterson? You, Floyd you, Patterson won. The 80s, bro. Well, I'm talking about 2024. Edgar Berlanga. I don't give a damn about Sonny Liston and Muhammad Ali 100 years ago. We're talking about today. And tomorrow, I'm going to screen record this, and you will be in my next video, brother, whatever your name is. Um, okay, my name is... As a matter of fact, oh, hold up. No disrespect. But I feel like Edgar's not going to get knocked out. I feel like that fake New York pride that y'all got, he will quit on his stool. His dad's going to say, no, that's it, because his pride won't let him get stretched out with that image of him living forever, bro. Y'all New York guys got this fake sense of confidence, bro, and I can't stand it, bro. Uh, Canelo Alvarez by devastating knockout. Fuck Edgar. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. Big fight weekend. We have Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Berlanga fighting. Danny Garcia, Ares Landy Lara, Roly Romero will be on a PBC card tonight. And in this video, we are going to talk about why Edgar Berlanga is going to win this fight. This from a boxing journalist that joined the show, Suleiman. And also, we're going to have the world-famous Southpaw TV also give his opinion about why Suleiman and other people that say Berlanga is going to win are dead wrong. But before we get into that, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you're a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much. Now, let's go into the conversation that took me on. I appreciate it. But sure. listen, um I hear you, I, like everybody else, been talking about the La Belanga, and they've been talking about the Canelo, and all, or, you know, they're giving much kudos to Canelo. The only biggest kudos I give to Canelo for having the, the 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 heart to step in the ring with a guy of those dimensions, of that size. Um, the size is going to be the difference. That's going to be the excuse that the Canelo team is going to be bringing. Um, this fight is going to be very similar, very similar to the Hall of Fame fight of of. Floyd Patterson and Sonny Liston won, okay? Floyd Patterson was a very good fighter, heavyweight, very small, very compact, had the winning team behind him, had the old people behind him, and Sonny Liston did not. Sonny Liston was a felon, had multiple problems with prison, going in and out of prison, uh, assaulting police officers and so forth. And, um, you know, he, he went in the ring. Um, he was a label as a big puncher, like a thudding puncher, like like what they're saying with Belanga. They say that he didn't have the same IQ, like but all the same excuses. But at the end of the day, the guy was knocking out people early. And that's exactly what Canelo's gonna he's it's gonna happen to Canelo. Canelo's gonna get hit with a real legitimate 168 pound punch. And he's not gonna be able to back up. He's used to fighting um sub pop position. When once he's hurt, um, he won't be able to box. He's too small to to box a guy at that dimension. Um the guy he studied his craft, thudding punches or snapping punches or whatever, but he's uh, he has power in both hands. He was hurting legitimate opponents. Um at that at, at that level when he knocked out 16 opponents on the first round. Like Ulysses Sierra, the last guy he knocked out in the first round, that guy was a very credible fighter. He got hurt early. He tried to move and, and he just patiently walked them down and finished them in the first round. These guys were actually blocking the shot, something like what Bermain Stever did with Deontay Wilder in the in the second fight. He was blocking the shots, but the impact, the snap of those punches was 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 dropping them. And this is what's gonna happen to Canelo. Canelo has not knocked out anybody. Canelo has lost his power. Canelo has prolonged his stay at 168 by fighting subpar position. He fought a guy like Monguilla. Monguilla didn't didn't fight for a world championship at 160 for a reason. Um, he was uh he was promoted by Oscar de la Hoya just like Canelo. 
um, Canelo uh, accolades that he got, most of the accolades he got was because he was with Golden Boy, with Oscar de la Hoya. If he would have been promoted by anybody else, I don't think he would have accomplished the accolades he had. Um, the reason that he left top rank of correction, in my opinion, and from what I'm hearing, he left top rank because he wanted a fight for a world championship. And top rank was stalling on it, okay? And um, they were matching him good. They were happy with him. But the problem is he wanted a, he wanted a fast track his way to the championship. He didn't want to have 40 fights, you know? And um, be fighting. And also, everybody was, um, top rank has a problem. The problem with top rank is Bob Arum. Bob Arum is very hard on the fighters, okay? He, every single body left top rank for that reason. Top rank, he's very snobbish. Like, he say, oh, but you have power, but you're not showing me no no stamina. You're not showing me that you could box. You're not showing me the guy has a vast amateur career. Berlanga has a vast amateur career. Berlanga took those guys, when he fought them on Nicholson, Demar Nicholson, he took him the distance intentionally with his team to show people, hey, I could do rounds with this guy. You know what I'm saying? I could last the rounds. I could win rounds. And that's what he did. He even dropped Darnell, Nich Darnell Nicholson, which is a six foot one, I mean, six foot one um, super middle with himself, got power in both hands, and he went the distance with him. He showed people he could go the distance. When he fought Jason Quigley, Jason Quigley is a very credible fighter who fought, who fought for a world championship against Andrade, who was also a very good fighter. And uh, he had two regional belts in his 160 when he moved up. He fought 12-round fight with Quigley. When he fought 12 round fight with Quigley, it was for an NBO championship. And he dropped him four times. He won every single round. The guy has game. I don't hear nobody in 168 pound calling out Jason Quigley. Not, not, not in Billy. Not Benavidez. Nobody. Because the guy comes in to fight to win. And, and, and he's very game. So the only guy that, that defeated him at that, at that division... Was uh was this gentleman um Berlanga? So then uh, Patty, uh, the last guy he knocked out, uh, that guy was IBO champion at 175, bowled down to 168, had three fights at 168, was on the way to fight Morel. Morel didn't want to fight him because he wasn't defeated. He was also labeled a puncher. So this guy went in the ring with him, and that's how he got the WBA number one ranking. Okay, um, they try to give him, uh, they try to play him and give him a real fight. This guy fought for 1.5 million to 2.5 million against McCrory. So why is he going to fight Morel for chump change? He didn't want that. He wants to fight for a legitimate belt. So if Canelo would have fought him, he would have got straight for the WBA. So he had no chance. I'm, I'm much cooler for him for having the heart, for stepping in the ring with a guy of those dimensions. Um, it, this fight is going to be very similar to the first fight with Sonny Liston, Floyd, May Floyd Patterson. Um, he's going to be swamped. He, he can't deal with a guy of those dimensions. Power does count. Okay, the guy's like two divisions. He comes in at cruiserweight dimensions. And Canelo is very small. He's squat. He's five foot seven and a half. He's a squat, small fighter who, I mean, he had his days, you know what I'm saying? But he hasn't fought a guy of those dimensions that could hit, that's not injured, uh, you know, that could fight. And the guy is not a pity pat puncher. He's a knockout artist. Okay, he he's gonna hurt you in there. So so this is what's gonna this is what's gonna happen. Um, Canelo is gonna be forced to go to 160 after a, a outrageous knockout defeat. Um, they're gonna blame the size. He's not gonna want to rematch. People are gonna be scared to death of Berlanga after this. They're not gonna want to step in the ring. Benavidez is gonna stay at 175. Um, then Billy's is he's gonna boil down to 160 just like Canelo. Um, Canelo most probably fight the winner of Danny Garcia. And it was Andy Lara. And, and to tell the truth, I think he's on the downslide. He's going to get knocked out by one, either one of those guys. He's on the downslide. He's, he's got to wrap it up. But, but Mexican fighters do stay, pre, they prolong their careers extensively uh, too much. And they get losses. They get losses on the resume. And they still go to the Hall of Fame. But if it would have been another nationality, like a Puerto Rican or, or a Black American, they would make a big deal about it. So they, they, they want them to have a spotless record. Like, this is the problem with Berlanga. They want him to be like a Hall of Fame material. And this is why this is why they're so hard on him and everybody's criticizing him. The same thing happened with Fredo Gomez. Where Fredo Gomez got his kudos after he knocked out Carlos Zarata on his seven or six title, title defense. So that's how that's how it is. They, they expect tremendous amount of, of talent to come out for the Puerto Rican fighters and from the black American fighters like, like Floyd. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so um, I just wanted to share this with you because everybody's saying that the guy doesn't have a boxing IQ. But I think, I think to defer, I think he has a better boxing IQ than people think. 
I think the guy, um, he has a better amateur career than Canelo. Canelo comes from a family of boxers that that they play people. They 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 they're like it's like a circus because they they make little rings in in the Mexican circuit with a soft floor, um, small ring to make the guys look like big punches, like they did with his brother Ramon Alvarez. The, the, his one of his big brothers, the guy was labeled as a puncher. And all he was as a slow dude. Um, it was Lani Lava knocked him in two rounds. Um, this is this this is what it is. It's, he's just a hype job. Canelo is is a is a is one of the most glorified hype jobs in boxing today. And um, I, this is a check and balance fight. This fight is going to be uh, a lot of casual fans. They're going to be stunned and they say, "Wow, how could Canelo get knocked out? He he became an undisputed champion in eleven months because the money." Because the, the the machine was behind him, but it wasn't because he was a, a very good fighter. He never was a good fighter. He just what like you said, he was very protected and you know, he fought guys like Avery Yildum, a guy that Chris Eubank knocked out. Chris Eubank knocked him out his first for his first loss by knockout. This guy, he fought guys that were not that good, but he's he's a lot of hype. And he lost a lot of fights. He lost to Vizlani Lara. He lost to Golovkin uh, Golovkin tw- one and two. OK, he, he the best win that he got of Golovkin was the third fight and Golovkin still within distance. He could never stop Golovkin. OK, so this guy's a hype job. Everybody knows it. And um, at the end of the day, the buck stops here. But Canelo is done. So he's going to oh, he's if he wants to continue his career, he's going to have to go down. And if he stays there and shows too, too much heart, he's going to be injured like like uh, Luis Lopez against um, uh, against Angelo Leo. And he's too, too much heart. And um, Angelo Leo knocked him out. You know what I'm saying? And gave him a brain bleed. So this is what's going to happen to Canelo. He's very small. I, I don't think he could take the punch. Okay? But I'm a real puncher. It's going to be a first round knockout. Well, like a first round knockout. People are going to be shocked. They're going to be like, oh, wow, what happened? And this, at the end of the day, they, they ask for it. You know what I'm saying? This is boxing, bro. This is professional boxing, bro. And everybody's saying bad stuff about the kid because they want to list, they want to get under the kid's skin. The kid is fantastic, or the kid is a he's a he's a star. He he's what he has an NBO belt, and people is calling him in New York world champion. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Um, what's your opinion about that, Mister Fanon? And thank you for having me on on your show. Man, it was absolutely positively a pleasure to have you. Um, and I don't know where to start, man. I think that you think very highly of Edgar Berlanga, and that is a wonderful thing to hear. What up? <laughs> Hold on, man. Oh, maybe Southpaw can tell us what you what he thinks. <laughs> oh man, um, no disrespect, bro, but uh, it sounds like you're related to Edgar uh, in some way. I'm Are not you? related to Edgar, man. I'm not related to. I'm from New York, bro. And uh, what they happened? Did. It, they that did the same is. thing. They did the same thing to uh to Tyson when Tyson was on the come up. They were saying that uh that Trevor Burrick was he went to distance with Larry Holmes. That he's not going to be able to deal with uh, uh, Troy Burbick and look at history. He knocked him out in two rounds. Let, uh, let, when he fought Michael Spinks, they said, oh, Michael Spinks, he's not, it's all wrong for Mike Tyson. Michael Spinks is too skilled and this is this and that. And he knocked him out in one round. So we, don't be shocked. Yo, uh, uh, respectfully, if I can speak a little bit. Um, we're not talking about Michael Spinks. We're not talking about Trevor Burbick. We're talking about Edgar Berlanga, the man who never been a champion. The man who got dropped by Cosetis. The man who got dropped in the amateurs by a guy who now sells CDs and DVDs. Um, we're talking about, if you talk about hype job, I mean, don't get me wrong, Canelo has been protected, but if we're talking about hype, a man who does not deserve the fight is definitely Edgar. Canelo only picked him because Canelo is only taking easy fights. So um, Edgar shouldn't be honored that Canelo picked him. Uh, Edgar should be insulted because Canelo see him as easy work, bro. I know that sounds good right now. I know you're feeling yourself and it's Friday, but mark my words, tomorrow you're going to eat these words and I'm screen recording it. I'm, I'm not going to eat these words, bro, because at the end of the day, bro, at the end of the day, okay, bro. Okay, the same thing, what happened with Sonny Listing and Floyd Pat Patterson? You, Floyd you, Patterson won. The 80s, bro. Well, I'm talking about 2024 Edgar Berlanga. I don't give a damn about Sonny Listing and Muhammad Ali 100 years ago. We're talking about today. And tomorrow, I'm going to screen record this, and you will be in my next video, brother, whatever your name is. Um, okay, my name is... As a matter of fact, oh, hold up, no disrespect, but I feel like Edgar's not going to get knocked out. I feel like that fake New York pride that y'all got, he will quit on his stool. His dad's going to say, no, that's it, because his pride won't let him get stretched out with that image of him living forever, bro. Y'all New York guys got this fake sense of confidence, bro, and I can't stand it, bro. Uh, Canelo Alvarez, by devastating knockout. Fuck Edgar. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.